With Donald Trump's New York hush money trial scheduled to begin just two weeks from Monday, the former president is continuing his attack, attacks against the presiding judge's daughter on Truth Social. By our count, at least four times since Judge Juan Marchand issued a gag order against him on Tuesday, limiting him from making statements about potential witnesses in that criminal trial. However, neither Judge Marchand nor his family are currently covered by that gag order. And just yesterday in Georgia, a lawyer for Mr. Trump cited the First Amendment and political speech as the reason why the charges against the former president in Fulton County should be dropped. Joining me now, MSNBC legal correspondent Lisa Rubin and Catherine Christian, a former Manhattan assistant district attorney. So, Lisa, how could Donald Trump's posts affect that gag order that was imposed earlier this week? It's a really interesting question, Ryan, because as of right now, as you noted, those posts aren't implicated in the current gag order. The gag order, as it's written now, talks about Donald Trump's ability to talk about known or potential witnesses, prospective or actual jurors, and then certain participants in the process, but not others. Namely, the lawyers in the case accepting Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg, court personnel, and then the family members of those lawyers and court personnel, but notably absent from that gag order right now, is the judge himself and any family members thereof. So if Judge Juan Marchand wants to take some action here, he will either have to expand the gag order or issue some new prohibition against the former president's ability to talk about his family members and therefore potentially threaten or harm them in the days ahead. So, Catherine, given what we know about Donald Trump, what else should he not be doing to uh, avoid uh, uh, any sort of fines or penalties because of his behavior? Well, let me just also say, in New York, it is a crime when a person intentionally and for no legitimate purpose engages in a course of conduct directed at a specific person, and they should reasonably know that that conduct is likely to cause that person reasonable fear for their safety. That's called stalking in the fourth degree. So I'm just putting it out there for any law enforcement. Obviously, you know, Ms. Michonne has to decide whether she wants to do anything about that. So basically, this is, he has named, Donald Trump has named her. He has uh, targeted her four times publicly. So I put that out there. So, but as Lisa is correct, in terms of the gag order, he technically did not violate it because the judge did not put himself or his family members as a category that Donald Trump could not attack. But Lisa, we've seen this play out before, right? Just a, a month ago, uh, while under a gang order, Trump launched similar attacks against Judge and Gorn and his family. Judge and Gorn did hold off on expanding that gag order. Do you think Judge Mershon will do the same this time around? And why wouldn't a judge include themselves and their family orders in a gag order? Well, let's start with your second question first, Ryan. Why wouldn't a judge include themselves? It's considered unseemly that judges take this risk and understand the risks of judicial service when they take their jobs. That's probably particularly true in a state judicial system like New York's, where Supreme Court justices like Juan Mershon, and that is his technical title, the trial judges in New York are Supreme Court justices. They are elected officials, and so they take that risk. On the other hand, Judge Marchand's daughter might be differently situated to Judge Angoran's wife, who presumably lives with Judge Angoran and therefore was able to sort of take advantage of any additional security that the judge himself had. If Ms. Marchand lives independently and as an adult, one would expect that she does from her family members, her father might be expected to act differently in this instance, Ryan. Mm. So, Catherine, yesterday, a sitting federal judge, Reggie Walton, actually criticized Mr. Trump's attacks on Judge Mershon, uh, very out of the ordinary for a sitting judge to do this. He said, quote, we do these jobs because we're committed to the rule of law and we believe in the rule of law. And the rule of law can only function effectively when judges who are prepared to carry out their duties without the threat of potential physical harm. Uh, I mean, what's your reaction to the fact that a sitting judge would feel so compelled to speak out about the gravity of the situation? Because it shows how horrendous this behavior is. And judges typically, they don't speak publicly, they don't talk to the press. And we know that there have been judges who have been killed and judges' family members who have been killed. It happened in, uh, in New Jersey a few years ago. So it's very, very dangerous, particularly because this is a person, Donald Trump, who has millions of followers who read his social media postings. And this young woman, who's the daughter of the judge, 
has nothing to do with this case. She is not the decision maker. So it's I'm sure other judges who have high profile cases are also, you know, scared that something like this might happen to them and their family members. They are public servants, too. It's not though, as though they're getting rich by sitting on the federal bench they, or the state bench. They could be making a lot more money probably in private law firms. So it is a lot that we ask of them. Uh, thank you both, Lisa Rubin, uh, Catherine Christian. We appreciate that. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.